Hunter. And I like DeSantis in many ways, but I don't like who he's aligning with all these big donors and him playing along with this. It's, it's very troubling. So, so tell us about the meeting and what really happened there. Nick, you have the minutes on it. That's right. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's wh where to begin. We, um, well, I want to set the record straight, first of all, because there is a big piece. Bro, why are you watching this? If I was talking like this, downtown would be in a psych ward. Yes. But, uh, you know, that's you downtown. Kanye West, when you're Kanye West and you talk like this, you get on the Alex Jones uh, platform. And then also on top of that, you get on your Twitter account and, and tweet out that, uh, you, you know, and, and tweet out like that you should go follow Bible.com or go to the band.com, uh, you know, Alex Jones' InfoWars uh, website. Then you promote Nick Fuentes' Nazi website. It's an NBC the other day written by Mark Caputo with a lot of lies about the dinner. And I don't know if people were misquoted or if bad quotes were given, but people are being led to believe that this was somehow a setup or an ambush to make the president look bad. That's not true. Ye loves Trump. I love Trump. We came to the dinner to have a discussion with him and have a discussion with him about the 2024 race. Ye had a proposition for him. And so a lot of it was really put together in the last minute. I didn't even really know until I was at Mar-a-Lago. Did you address what NJF means? That's his name, bro. Nicholas J. Fuentes. What the fuck do you mean? Uh, whether or not we would be at the dinner was something that Ye and I discussed on the flight there and on the car ride over. So I, I just want to get that cleared up straight away um, because I think Ye and I both believe that Trump is a great option. It's It really just comes down to Trump and Ye for the most part. But them trying to premeditatively claim it was some secret meeting and he knew he was meeting with you, that's not true. No, yeah, and um, and it was surprising because we had this conversation the day before we flew out. Um, we were at, we were in L.A. on that Monday, and I was told it may not even be possible for you. It may not even be able to get through. Well, we pulled up to the club. They checked out, yay. They checked out Karen's ID and information. We drove up. We walked in. We sat down in the lobby. The president came out of the dining room, and that was that. He invited Ye to dinner, and I don't know if it was Ye or Trump, but one of them said, uh, well, we want to bring uh, Jamar, uh, Karen, and Nick into the dining room. And so we came in. We sat down. Well, we took some pictures. Ye, uh, <laughs> sort of. That's a good one. <laughs> she's stroking off my beef. That's funny. Oh, fuck. I'm like missing. Oh, there it is. She's stroking off my beef. I like that. That's good. Lit up the whole room. Everybody wanted to get a picture with him. We sat down at the table. Um, and I want to say it, initially it was a very pleasant dinner. Trump gave kind of the standard black voter pitch. He talked about the HBCUs, the opportunity zones, things like that. I love how all of these guys are so fucking stupid and so one note with their analysis of the black vote. These guys are supposed to be the brilliant minds, dude. This guy won a fucking, this guy won a political race against Hillary Clinton, dude. Can you imagine? His understanding of American politics is like, oh, you're black. Black people will vote for you. That's crazy, dude. That is actually fucking insane. There is no further proof that Hillary Clinton is the... Biggest loser from this conversation. Like, Hillary Clinton lost to a fucking person who thinks Kanye West will be able to captivate the black vote. Love that. That's awesome. That's that. That's how bad uh, Trump's analysis is, okay? And then it turned out that um, Ye had... Which, by the way, why is Nick Fuentes saying the black vote? Because on his own broadcast, he calls it the N-word with a hard R uh, voting block. So that's, uh, you know... Well, that's the difference between Nick unhinged on his own broadcast versus Nick when he is on a larger platform. Um, he has said that, by the way. That's the that's the kind of guy he is, and that's who Kanye's uh, best friend is that follows him around everywhere. Maybe Nick has been de-radicalized by Kanye. Please, please, please. You're you're joking, but like, please, dude had accidentally sent a text message to a lawyer that both Trump and Ye share um, and forward him some intel that Karen gave to us about how we were going to handle the Trump meeting and how to read his body language and the kinds of things that maybe we should avoid or things we might want to say. And so before the dinner, Ye accidentally forwarded that to a lawyer who then in the middle of the dinner apparently called Trump to say, hey, Karen Giorno's involved. This is a setup. You guys are being set up right now. It was really just based on a misunderstanding. And after that call, he... Well, who's this lawyer? 
Uh, do you mind if I say the name? Yes. It's yes, you mind? Or? No, I don't. Okay, it's uh, Nick Gravante. So he was texting I don't me. Mind, I don't mind any names. Okay. I think that's the general just so, let, 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 him, let, him, let him finish the entire story. Right. So because we pulled up in the car and Ye said, here, I'll forward you these notes. So he forwarded it to me and I said, hey, I didn't get the text. And we kind of brushed it off and we found out later. Yeah, dude, that is a good point. Nick has been wearing the same smelly ass hoodie for like three weeks now, bro. There is no way you know what's cooking under that hoodie, okay? He's got all sorts of uh, back knee. That shit is sticky at this point. You know what I mean? Holy fuck, you know that shit is sweaty. You know it is so smelly, bro. Jesus Christ. Holy fuck, dude. Oh, my Lord. It's just, it's got to be unimaginable. Peter, he meant to send it to Nicholas Fuentes. He sent it to Nicholas Gravante on accident. So the dinner was actually very pleasant. It was very friendly. Ye picked out a song to play. He put on Say You Will off of 808s. And then Trump said, oh, I don't know. Let's put on one of your hits. So he put on Stronger. It was very congenial. Well, then in the middle of the dinner, Trump gets this call because Nick Gravante apparently sent the text to one of Trump's guys or somebody. Somebody called Trump and said, Karen is giving Ye intel because Karen worked for Trump. She ran the state of Florida during the Republican primary in 16. And so he got the heads up. They, they thought it was some big ambush. So he gets off the phone and the tone totally flipped. And he starts telling Ye these stories about how some of his black constituents had betrayed him. He told the story about how he got ASAP Rocky out of jail. He told the story about how he got the uh, NBA basketball players out of the Chinese jail. And the moral of the story was, if you go against me, if you're disloyal to me, I'll crush you. That was kind of the subtext of the stories from Trump. He said that Kim, uh, Kim Kardashian, he said some nasty things about her because she endorsed Joe Biden after Trump released, uh, what, what is it, Alice? Uh, Alice Johnson. Alice Johnson from prison. He commuted her sentence and then gave her a pardon. So he felt betrayed by that. And then Ye made the proposition and said, hey, I'd like you to be my running mate in 2024. And Trump sort I, of- I gave him the opportunity. I didn't say I would like him to. I said, you have the opportunity. Right, yes. To be my running mate in 2024. Yes. And, well, he uh, wear a mask. As well. I like that that's the part he wants to correct. That's how you know, bro. Trump, like, talks shit about the woman of his dreams, okay? And, like, the, the worst part about the conversation that needs to be, the, that needs clarity for Kanye is that at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break now. He's like, and if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. If you want an uninterrupted broadcasting experience, that's all you need to do. Which you can do for $5 or for free or with a Twitch Prime or by uh, getting gifted a sub. Here's a three-minute ad break now. And also one minute in the middle of the hour because Twitch won't let me run four minutes of ads. You're so annoying, swear to God. <laughs> Why is it that, like, I've been saying that this is going to change for a month, and yet, and uh, this goes to show so many people come in and out of this broadcast, because, like, there's still at least a thousand people in here that are like, what? Every hour. Well, though, I think it would look cool. I do think it looks cool. So he sat back and folded his arms, and he kind of smirked, and he sort of dismissed it, but then he, he got a little bit heated. And he said, you can't win, you'll never win. Don't run, you can win at a lot of things, but you can't win at this. And then he turned to me and Karen and said, you guys are smart, I know you work for him, but don't lie to him, tell him, tell him he can't win. And you know, I love Trump and I love Ye. And so I'm looking at Trump and then I'm looking at Ye and I'm looking at Trump and Ye. I watch almost every day and never heard you mention three minute ad breaks, Lamau. I literally for an entire month told you that it was going to increase to four minutes an hour the density four minutes an hour was going to be the density and that I can't even run three more than three minutes in the top of the hour. We literally had, we literally had a fucking vote basically on whether I should run two, two minute ads or whether I should run one, four minute ad at the beginning of the hour, which we arrived at one, four minute ad in the beginning of the hour, but I can't even do that because unfortunately I, I, I drew it on paint like for an entire month. Why do motherfuckers cap on this app so much? Because I don't know because they just they think like they probably watch like an hour in and out you know what I mean a day or something so they think like they just accidentally missed it so they think like oh there's no way this was discussed you know what I mean and then you have Mr. Marcellus these ads are killing me but please reduce brother you are a subscriber you do not see any of the ads why are you claiming that you are seeing the ads just to fucking feel like you're, you're a 40 month subscriber you have never seen an ad on this broadcast. Why Why do you want to? I'm going to un-VIP you right now, motherfucker. He's just trying to LARP. 
as though he's like one of the normies in here. I just want to fit in. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Tell me. <laughs> Nick, you, uh, they say you're a white supremacist. Are you a white supremacist? No, not at all. Well, spend some time on that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a Catholic. I'm, I'm Christian. And so I believe that we I know all... that sounds white supremacist right there, but it's not. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I believe that we're all children of God. And so I think that black, white, red, brown, whatever, we are all, we're all siblings in a certain sense because we're... Okay, see, he's doing it. Now he's like, oh, come on. We're all children of God. Like, I'm not racist. This is the dog whistle part, okay? He's at least, like, able to hold it back a little bit. Now, a good debater or a good broadcaster, rather, in this circumstance would have to put their fucking debate cap on, okay? And ask Nick Fuentes, oh, really? Is that what you think? Well, then why do you, do you believe that it should be a white ethno state? You've said that you want a Catholic led authoritarian white ethno state where you know uh women are not allowed to hold a job like why do you think that then because or do you still think that or has your mind changed like you know what i mean except alex jones doesn't care about that alex jones just wants nick to come across as like not as big as a as a anti-semite as kanye west so he can make it seem like he's got some reasonable fucking ideas because alex jones is just as big as a piece of shit as kanye west if not a bigger piece of shit Okay, just admit you think Nikki is based. Oh, God, it's so sad. Why do you need all this ad revenue? What do you do with it? Your mom, dude. Your mom, brother. 13 month subscriber. Your mom. She's getting expensive, dude. Evade him? Absolutely not. Take a week off. We're created by God. I do, though, believe that there are races. There are, there are black people. There are white people. There are Hispanics. Um, and, and these differences mean something to people. They mean things to each other. That doesn't mean that we can't get along. That doesn't mean... But the left saying it's bad to even have a culture. They're saying none of us can be, say, I'm this or I'm that. Right. They want to melt us all down. That's what globalization is. They want to globalize the government, the economy, and the population. They want a global government. They want to globalize the economy through free trade. There's no culture. Exactly. And, and the population through immigration. And they want to make it so that in 50, 100 years, there are no distinct nations. There's no distinct peoples. There's so nobody can stand up to them. Right. Just a slave class, undifferentiated. That's what they want. This um, is the future president you're talking to right now. Is Nick your running mate? He's not old enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Nick, how old are you? I'm 24, maybe in a few cycles. And, and Trump loved Nick. He looked at me, he said, where did you find this kid? He had no idea until, what's the guy that wrote the speech that you didn't like? Jason Miller. Did Jason Miller lied afterwards, after they found out who you were. And what did Jason say in the press to start off? Because it, it, it started to be like a series of lie after lie after lie. And, fake it wasn't a tweet it was a truth social after truth social after truth social so give them the rundown on that yeah so initially <sighs> we didn't publish anything about the dinner kind of like a fucking kid dude um anyway uh like he's so excited 24 i thought he was like 37 or some shit yeah well that's what fucking being a smelly nazi does to you brother like a unfuckable turbo virgin smelly ass nazi <laughs> It was rumored that Ye went to dinner with Trump. Then it was rumored that I was at the dinner because I walked through the airport in Miami. Then there was a statement from Jason Miller, who spoke as a representative for Trump, and he said, well, Nick Fuentes was not at the dinner. And it was only at that point, which was a lie, it was only at that point when we began to respond, and Ye said, he can't say that. Nick was at the dinner. That was a lie. But, I mean, I actually like the speeches that Jason Miller wrote. Maybe, I mean, he was just scared. Who, who was scared? Trump? No, I mean, I think Miller thinking it was a setup, but I'm, I mean, I think that's what they thought. They thought, oh, this is a setup, and I, and I, and I think that's where that fear but, came but, from. But, okay, but people got to stop lying. Our leaders, our politicians have to stop being afraid and being so political, and we have to put Christ first. And if anything comes from this, like, the best thing that could come from this is I'm the president of the United States in 2000. I thought you gave me a week off. What happened? What? No, I didn't give you the week off. I just told you that I fucked your mom and she's she has expensive taste, which I don't even hold past her. I gave someone else a week off when they said you should debate uh, Nick Fuentes. 2024. The worst thing that could come from this is our leaders are held to Christian values, not Zionist values. Now, let's talk about the difference of Trump's truth socials. 
Yeah. yeah. So he put out three successive posts. There's three responses from Trump on True Social, and they just get more sort of erratic as the pressure grows. You know, the first one, he says, it was a very uneventful dinner. I did meet with Ye. The next post was, uh, I don't know who Nick Fuentes was, and it was <laughs> totally uneventful. The third one, he says, Ye, a very troubled man who happens to be black, came for badly needed advice. And so it just kept getting more and more sort of angry and erratic. And, and I think what Ye's getting at, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but Trump is surrounded by handlers. He's surrounded by people like Jared Kushner. And yeah, unlike, unlike Kanye, by the way, like, you know, clearly uh, Kanye West, on the other hand, a, a true free thinker right now. Who of the three is worse? Bro, I don't even know. And I don't even care, really. Like, I don't know who the fucking worst person is in between, like, Nick Fuentes, Kanye West, and Donald Trump. I don't fucking know. They're all... All birini vurotekine is what I would say in Turkish. And Jason Miller, he's got three campaign well, managers. Jared Kushner bailed because he got what he wanted out of Trump, right? What did, what did Jared do when Trump was in office? He got the Abraham Accords. Jared Kushner with his best friend, Bibi Netanyahu, at 666 Fifth Avenue. They brokered the Abraham Accords, which opened up investment from the Gulf states into Israel. What did Netan have to say about it exactly? Netanyahu loves it, of course, because this but is But let's how expand on that. I love Jared. Hey, hey. <laughs> That's it. This is Ned. Okay. No, keep going. My, my, my point is, is that it, it's fair, though, for Trump that it is a political attack to claim that he endorses or represents even the, the views they claim you hold that you don't hold. So clearly, you can see how the media is using you guys as an attack on Trump. They're using us to try to put this guy we've never heard of, DeSantis, uh, in office. Like... DeSantis is going to play by the book. The thing about Trump is this guy is one of the best presidents we have. He's top five presidents. He's right there with Ronald Reagan. And he's so gross. He said Ronald Reagan. Oh, dude, come on. That's like pre mania days, bro. You know, you know, Ronald Reagan is bad. How many times did Kanye West talk about? I, there's no way Kanye West has never talked about Ronald Reagan bringing crack into fucking black neighborhoods. There's no fucking shot. What you got against Reagan? Ronald Reagan literally, f oh my God. Ronald Reagan straight up said African diplomats are monkeys who don't know how to wear shoes, okay? I have to use that in a, in a phone conversation with Richard Nixon. I have to use that because a lot of liberals don't understand like the, the systemic oppression um, pushed upon the black community by the likes of American presidents all the way ranging from Ronald Reagan to Bill Clinton, okay? So I have to use like aesthetics-based uh, arguments in this regard, but there's plenty that they have done that is uh, awful on top of that. He wrote all of it, but, or most of it, but. And the entire time he was the president, the Jewish media attacked him. They were mad because he was actually working for the country. And now they're doing everything, including this meeting, to try to, to say he's not allowed to meet with. This is InfoWars. Who are you to say who the president can meet with, Netanyahu? Like, I'm, I'm not going to, the, the Holy Spirit fills me up, and the less sin I have, the less angry I get, you know? So you can't make me angry, but if I was of another version of Ye, the Kanye West that you guys know, I would be angry at Netan for even speaking on one of the best presidents, one of our best presidents of all times. Shut the, shut the bless up, Netan. This is from Ye. Now you know who I am. Do you know who I am now, Netanyahu? You know who I am now, Jared Kushner? You know who I am, Josh Kushner? Let me tell you something about Softy Josh. It's so weird. Like, his hatred, his animosity for Jared and Josh Kushner is like, like it, it's so weird. Like, th that isn't to say that they're likable individuals, okay? Especially Jared. Like, Josh has to have at least some level of personality because he bagged Carly Kloss, right? But like, and we know Jared does not. But it's, like, so obvious. He's just like, oh, yeah, they're Jewish. That's why I hate them. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Right. Marshmallow Josh um, was at a dinner. I'm at Jared's house, Jared and Ivanka's house. And um, I didn't realize at the dinner that Josh Kushner had 10% of skims, which was my ex-wife clothing line, which I have 5% of. And it's one of the reasons why even after the attack where – Ari Emanuel had all of my deals destroyed. I was still worth $400 million, right? And still had $250 million of cash available, right? So um, 
Josh, I, I say, what do you think about Jared working for me in 2024? And Josh looks at Jared and says, oh, I would kill him. And so then towards the end of the meeting, I'm leaving their apartment. They do like a soft hug. Uh, because I think like Jared, as soft as Jared is, uh, he has to hug Josh extra soft so, you know, he doesn't melt like toilet paper. And <laughs> what I realized afterwards. Okay, this part's funny, dude. This part's good. Josh had 10% of a line that I only had 5% double where I, you know, Skims is an extension of Yeezy. It's an extension of my brand. Literally, I put the creative director from Yeezy at Skims. Because at first Skims was a lingerie line. And then it was Chris Jenner's idea to make it a shapewear line. And I said, I have the perfect person. Let's take these elements of Yeezy and let's put this here. And then Josh goes in and puts $150 million from some investment firm to then control something that my ex-wife was making for our children. No, I get it. So you're at this meeting and literally realizing, oh my God, I own this. Every time he like complains about a specific Jewish person, he's literally just complaining about them owning capital. Okay. Like he is complaining about capitalism while being a defender of capitalism. And as I've said a million times over, I mean, I don't know how many times I've fucking repeated myself on this issue. It's just like, that's what happens when you yourself both love capitalism and have been taught that to be like you're that you're a good capitalist and capitalism is a good thing. It's actually positive. Okay. But then you simultaneously fucking see exploitation. Okay. You see capital ownership over uh, something that you have actually put work into, okay, by your own uh, recognition. Maybe he didn't actually do that, but it doesn't matter. And then you fucking turn around and go, oh, well, well there, these guys got to be the bad capitalists. There's got to be another reason, you know what I mean? It must be because they're Jewish. That's what it is. That's what it is the problem here. It must be that like, they're, they're uh, Jewish, and that's why. That's the underlying reason. And ran this, this guy's double what I get. You didn't yeah. even know he was the owner. Yeah, and that's what I explained to Jared. I was on text with Jared. I said, what if I had 10% of a line with Ivanka and you didn't know and you only had 5%. I'm sure you- but What if he learned you own 10% of 666 Park Avenue? He'd be pissed. Or what if I had 10% of that 800, uh, how, how, how big was the deal that he did after he got out of- So all what you're saying is we need reparations from Hollywood. We need the Hollywood elite that have almost all the money. They need reparations to America. Wait, I want to talk about how Jared did that first deal. You hear what I'm saying? Judeo on these Christians till I value. Okay, everybody needs to stop doing these. Okay, that's the last one. We're done with that. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done. We're done with that. Right. We're, we're, no, right. no longer are we doing that. Yeah, he got billions. And uh, this is something that was covered in the Wall Street Journal. Jared Kushner brokered the Abraham Accords with Netanyahu. And before Trump was even out of office, they were arranging for how Kushner could take a massive fee from Okay, but separate from Kushner getting money, I don't like Kushner. He glows in the dark. He's creepy as hell. Yeah, I, don't, but, I mean, that's a good peace deal to get the Arabs and Jews to quit killing him. Oh, he's so cucked, dude. Yo, Alex Jones is so cucked. Like, no, the Abraham Accords is good, actually. Uh, okay, dude. I mean, first of all, this motherfucker's a Nazi. He doesn't give a shit, okay? He just does not care. Uh, Kanye West does not know what the Abraham Accords is. I will stake money on that. There is a 0% chance he knows anything about what that is, okay? But but it is it is kind of dorky for Alex Jones, who used to be, like, the, the main contrarian, okay? To just be like, well, you know, State Department's bad. There's psychotic pedophiles out there, but also, like, you know, it's really good when they did the Abrahamic Accords. <laughs> each other i mean I, uh, but don't, I, and I agree with you to some extent but don't, i mean actually that's a pretty i always i said that's something good kushner did i mean i don't like kushner but he I mean, did it for the alex jones knows where his bread is buttered okay he knows he knows that he has a massive massive evangelical christian base and evangelical christians loved the abraham accords evangelical christians in texas absolutely love uh anything that advances the ultimate cause that in their minds will make uh, uh it will help israel wipe out everybody else okay so that you know jesus christ can come back to earth we've gone over this a million times over uh you know and then jesus will come back to earth and rapture will happen in megiddo who will fight this is a real thing that evangelical christians believe okay evangelical christians in america believe this i have to fucking you know State this, show this, tell you this. I don't know what else to tell you. It sounds fucking insane, but one of the most, one of the largest, most politically active uh, uh, groups uh, in America, religious groups in America, literally does this. Okay, this is what they believe. Money. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we got things. Done, yeah.
And I would say I'm not defending him. I'm saying, isn't it good to try to get Middle East peace? Ask, let's ask Nick. Yeah, Nick, go ahead. <laughs> See, I told you he has no idea. He's like, yeah, ask Nick. Refer to Nick on this one. I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. I was in that group. You couldn't be close to the truth. So many weird Southern First Baptists love Israel. And anything to do with the rapture? Yes. American Christians love Israel for that reason. They think like someone just told them that that is what's happening. You know what I mean? If you want Middle East peace, you have to go to Israel because Israel is the one who has been bombing Syria. Israel is the one that's- And they got 200 war. nuclear weapons. They ain't going nowhere. Exactly, and that's why they killed JFK and RFK was because of they were trying to get their WMD what? program off the ground. Operation Apollo, it was Jack Kennedy that wanted IAEA inspectors looking into it. No, and that is probably one of the main, that's one of the reasons Kennedy got killed. That was what, little. What, what we need to say right now, and we're going to bring Ali on in a second, is my both my parents were educators, right? And we're here as the educators. That's what's in our heart. When we get the information, we put ourselves at risk to give you the information. There's a lot. Oh, dude, they're going to bring the, the Omega chin, dude. They're going to bring Habsburg jaw. A lot of teachers, incredibly intelligent people that have been canceled and kicked out of universities for not playing along with the system. So stop looking at us like celebrities, like we're trying to get media. We're using our position, putting our finances, putting our, our personal well-being at risk to say the truth out loud. And I was on the plane with Nick and I said, it feels like we're in Vietnam in the middle of the war with our backs to the wall, holding our guns and saying, you know, Nick. Bro, Kaya should stay away from analogies or what his experiences feel like. Because, like, I have yet to hear one thing that fits, okay? He said he's, like, MLK. First, he said he was, like, Malcolm. And then he was, like, oh, I'm more like MLK. Uh, then he's, like, saying this is just, like, our Vietnam. Like, what is happening? He said it's, like, uh, he, he also said... Uh, you know, Jewish people are hiding him in their floorboards because he's like escaping other Jewish people, just like Anne Frank. Like he's just holy fuck, dude. <laughs> just every time he, as a you know billionaire, fall from grace uh, due to relentless anti-Semitism on uh, the timeline. Every time he mentions that, he has to use like a civil rights movement or something, and it's crazy. Nick, how did you get here? <laughs> Yay! How did you get here? Well, all the guns are going off, and all the media is going off, and say this is info wars, right? So you got some info warriors on both sides of you, and you fought for us. You've been fighting this battle for a long time, Alex, and we just got to salute you as a Christian and as American because you paved the way to make braver soldiers like us today. It's like Terminator Part Ten happening right now. Wow. All right. We got to go to break. We're going to get Laura Loomer on. We're, we're going we're gonna... to watch. I got to watch uh, my accounts because they've been frozen by the Jewish uh, banks. So I, I need to watch my mills. Well, CNN says why people are evil Nazis. So, I mean, I, I, I disagree with both statements, but I get the yeah, frozen. I don't, I don't like the word evil next to Nazis. I think we need to look at. <laughs> Alex Jones starts laughing. Like thinking this is a uh, this is an opportunity. This is a moment like where it, it's just so obvious that Kanye. This is like the fourth time at this point in the past two hours where he's just like said straight up that he has positive feelings about Nazis or positive feelings about Hitler. You know, and and Alex is just like, all right, come on, come on, guy, come on, let's just you know. <laughs> oh my goodness! Just because you don't like one group doesn't mean the other. But look, I fine. love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. Oh! <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I have to disagree with that. Hey, but listen, we're going to go to break. Like, please, commercial break. Please, please, please. Infowars.com. I'm, 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 the, I'm the crazy one here. We're all crazy. The whole world's crazy. And, and the whole power structure's coming down. This is absolutely lit. This is lit, 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 lit. Number one show in the world right now. Everybody's tuned in everywhere. Yeah, yeah he's so excited. Hey, right? everybody, I appreciate you being here. We're going to go to break. We're going to come back and play that little my favorite promo with Ye. And then we're going to air. Everybody's out here. Don't let them influence you in any way because they're controlled by the people who really influence the world. They're not serving God. That he trying to cancel me, I don't care, not a, I see the ex playing kids just to run up commas. Brands keep going woke. There is no way, bro. That's crazy. Dude, Kanye West can, oh my God, he's going to do a collab with this man. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's it. It's so good. He deserves it. He deserves to do a fucking collab with like, what is it, Bryson Gray or whatever? They gonna lose this guy's name? Away, Nike, and now I'm Balenciaga. Whoa, whoa, 
Now I burn Balenciaga. They keep coming for our kids. Now we need What what year is that from? That's like kind of crazy that they heard a black rapper on InfoWars mom get the camera. I mean, this guy has all been all over. Design a brand then they hot. I know hell is hot to do away Nike. And now I burn Balenciaga. If you a Christ, you on my team. You know what I mean? They pushing LGBT on children movie screens. They push the pedophilia. They sneak it in the scenes. And now all these cold I love when someone buys an expensive ass dumbass fucking Balenciaga shoe only to burn it. Like, okay, you did something, dude. You fucking killed it. Y you killed it, dude. You just gave him money for no reason. He first popped off two years ago. Yeah, I know. Bryson Gray. Uh, he he did the what was it? He his his big song, like his really big song, was uh the Let's Go Brandon. Friends, we doing the same thing. Balenciaga got caught. Now nah, that they fall, I can't support wickedness. I walk a high talk. I know Satan want me to run, but I ain't much fault. I don't care about getting canceled. Don't know who you. I've never seen these Balenciagas. I feel like these are Balenciaga, okay? Are these actually real Balenciagas? Does, someone in the chat must know. Like, there's no fucking... What? These are... <laughs> no, they try promoting cuties. I deleted Netflix. Nike pushing sexuality, so I exit. We hit them in their pockets. They gonna get the message. It's time to build our own up like it's Tetris. Epstein Island, can I see the guest list? We gotta protect the children because they precious. If we don't fight now, what they gonna be left with? Because it's gonna get worse. Just wait for their next trick. They keep trying to cancel me. I don't care, nada. I see they exploiting kids just to run up commas. Brands keep going uh. old. They gonna lose dollars through away Nike. And now Oh, Forgiato! Forgiato! Our boy Forgiato is in it! Oh, let's go, dude. I'm so happy that Kanye West now knows who Forgiato Blow is. Oh, that's they awesome. Designer brands, and they hide. I know hell is hot. I threw away Nike, and now I burn Balenciaga. Balenciaga, let me get my 1400 bag. Right. Hunter about and teddy bears, and they come and drag. Right. You go woke, you go broke. Get yeah, as big fat. Now you can't blame Kanye, so you big man. They call it art, but we call it pedophilia. They try to cancel culture, but now we got a fear in us. Supreme uh. Court documents about CC, and not a word from the White House of Sleepy. Joe. You know <laughs> He's got the InfoWars store hat on the song. Yo! Yo! Oh, that's good, dude. That's fucking awesome. Oh, my he God. He was a fan. Damn. Kyrie just got banned. It's all part of the plan. Are you woke? Are you woke? Companies pulling scams, exploiting all the children, selling them for bands. Are you broke? Now they still blaming Ray J. Ray J. But me, I'm blaming Kim K. I pray to God every day when I wake up, every undercover pedal, they gonna have to face us. They keep trying to cancel. Bro, this dude is like, first of all, this dude's in Florida, okay? Listen, he he's, if I'm looking like this in Florida, <laughs> you know, don't cast stones, okay? From your glass house, my friend, okay? It's just like, come on, dog. Like, <laughs> I know his ass has a DUI charge for sure, okay? Just across the board and maybe domestic battery, something like that. I don't care, nada. I see they exploiting kids just to run up commas. Brands keep going woke. They gonna lose dollars through away Nike. And now I burn Balenciaga. Now I burn Balenciaga. They keep coming for our kids. Now we need to follow. Designer brands and they hot. I know hell is hot to away Nike. And now I burn Balenciaga. Burn Balenciaga. Alistair Crowley? What? Yo, I'm Alex Jones, your host, Nick Fuentes. Who are those rappers? Those are the two prominent MAGA rappers, Bryson Gray and Forgiato Blow. And unfortunately, I know about all of their uh, all of their songs. A lot of you motherfuckers say that I don't listen to rap music or music in general. And guess what? I do actually. Okay, I listen to Forgiato Blow and I listen to and I listen to Bryson Gray. Ali Alexander, Owen Troyer, about to join us riding shotgun. Yeah, he doesn't want to wear an earpiece, so he's going to call Laura Loomer. Yeah, so we're going to put Laura Loomer on the way. She was this originally going to be on earlier. Okay, yeah, I gotta you're be, hosting the show. Go Hold ahead. On. Laura, can, can you guys hear Laura on the mic? What they're doing is they're talking to her out there. I told them 45 minutes ago. Laura, so can tell we her, hear you on the mic? Tell her you're going to call her. They didn't do that because it's such a party. Everybody, I can hear you. Can you guys hear her? Laura, say something. She's this not going to Laura Loomer? Her. Yeah, Laura, you're on the air. Go ahead. How's it going? That's you're on the air with Yay. Go ahead. He wants to do it over his speakerphone. Go ahead. 
Well, look, I just I just wanted to call in. You know, uh, I see that everybody on this stream has been canceled in some fashion. And, you know, I've also been canceled. And, you know, I have a unique perspective uh, because, uh, you know, I'm Jewish. And I happen to be uh, one of the most banned and censored person uh, people in this country. And so, uh, you know, I just wanted to talk about uh, cancel culture and, uh, you know, the act of debanking and deplatforming uh, from my perspective because, uh, you know, I was really one of the first people that uh, experienced all of this cancel culture. And uh, I would just say that, um, you know, I can sympathize uh, with uh, anybody who's had uh, their voice silenced. I don't think that uh, censorship is the answer, no matter how uh, much you disagree with another person or how offensive you may find their statements or their arguments to be. And what we need in this country is more free speech. Um, and I say that, um, you know, as a Jewish American woman watching this stream and, you know, uh, watching the plague of cancel culture that has really swept not just our country, but the entire world over these last few years. Um, and I will say that being Jewish has never uh, saved me from being canceled. It never uh, stopped the banks from shutting down my access to my bank account. Uh, being Jewish never, uh, you know, prevented me from uh, becoming, like I said, the most banned woman in the world. So I just wanted to make it clear that, um, you know, while, you know, there's no disputing the fact that is she a pick me girl? Yeah, oh, well, yeah. There is no better way to describe it. Yes. That groups like the ADL and APAC and uh, you know powerful um, you know left wing. Oh, M Hud, we saw this already. We we covered this already on the stream earlier. If I had one wish, it would be for Kanye West to come out as a neo reactionary. Yeah, I think we all know who to blame uh, for this one. 2018 Hassan. My response was kind of whack, to be honest. In 2018, I could have been funnier. Oh, here is here is Laura Loomer. There you go. <laughs> Remember that time Laura Loomer was caught on a video hitting on a Nazi with lines like, I have big tits and an Ashkenazi. So good. You're like beautiful. Thank you. You're like an Aryan degenerate goddess. She said, you're so beautiful, like an Aryan degenerate goddess. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Fire. You're Aryan too. I know, but I'm Jewish. It's, it's so <laughs> this guy is a Nazi. Okay. And he's like, uh, uh oh, you're Jewish. She said, you're Aryan, too. Oh, yeah. You're Aryan, too. I know, but I'm Jewish. It's, it's okay. And the Nazis hate me. <laughs> it's fine. All He's trying to leave, and she got the death grip on him, dude. He's like, oh, you're Jewish? Uh, Walking away. It's okay. You're walking away. And she's like, she's literally just like, she's literally just like got the fucking Vulcan death grip. Why people want to put me in a gas chamber? Because they're obsessed with the Jews. I don't, I think they're just memeing on you, but it's okay. They're just jealous because I have big tits and an Ashkenazi IQ. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah. You got it. I'm going to tell you a secret. Like, do you know so many people in this movement who preach trad life are like fucking people on the side and like cheating on their partners? That's like, so bad. Like, they're not even like really so trapped. This guy is like, he's like, please, like, this dude is, this is like, I'm a Nazi, but like, this is so bad. Like, like, your eyes look Why did that turn me on? Because your name is Sex Machine 69, and you are probably deprived of the human touch. If you watch this disgusting interaction between Laura Loomer, a, a wannabe Nazi <clears throat> who also is Jewish, talking to the fucking poster boy, the Aryan youth over here, who literally said something along the lines of, oh, you're, you're Jewish, you're not Aryan? Oh, that's okay, I guess, and tried to fucking walk away. And this, this did it for you? I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Even, even nice bathroom is not going to come out and say this did it for me. Okay. Oh, he did. He said W Riz, I guess. Oh God. Oh no. What's wrong with my moderation team, bro? This is, oh my Lord. Oh my God. So that is so degenerate, dude. Holy fuck. Jewish individuals and in some cases, right-wing Jewish individuals themselves are advocating for cancel culture. Um, there are Jews themselves who have also been canceled. Yeah, you shouldn't be penalized for what other people have done. I, Martin Luther King said that, and I agree with it. So, yeah, you called yourself more like Martin Luther King the other day than Malcolm X. I tend to agree with that. I like Malcolm X. I've read his writings, listened to him, incredibly smart intellectual. He was downtrodden. He was telling people to stand up. He was an amazing revolutionary for his time, an amazing man. But I think Martin Luther King was more powerful, and even Malcolm came around to his worldview of thinking. So my issue is, it's the same thing we're talking about here, is that is that you know Laura Loomer has been censored, Laura Loomer has been attacked, and Israel has the most draconian COVID shots against their population of any group. What? So I'm saying, why aren't they exempt? Because there's a criminal. 
Alex Jones is like, listen, brother, there is an international Jewish cabal, okay? But like, but they're also hurting the Jews by giving them COVID vaccinations. <laughs> he's like, he's so strange. He's like, it's not, it's not the way you think it is. If it was like a full blown Jewish cabal, then then all the Jews in Israel wouldn't be getting vaccinated. <laughs> like he he it's it's awesome. He, his He's trying. He's trying to, like, make sense of what the fuck uh, Kanye West is saying by being like, well, you know, uh, Jews are vaccinated. <laughs> they made every every Jew in Israel get vaccinated, brother. Criminal group posing as them. Christ talked about this. That is, that is trying to manipulate and pose as the leadership of every group. There's groups that claim they lead the black folks that aren't caring about blacks. There's gr groups that claim they care about white people that aren't really caring. There's groups that claim... Oh, this is why this is why Parler fucking dropped them. Parler dropped them. Far right white national Twitter clone Parler announces Kanye's purchase of Parler is off from Parler HQ. Parliament Technologies is confirmed to the company. First of all, he doesn't have money. How was he gonna buy Parler? What bank is gonna be like? Yeah, we'll stake it. Well, I guess it's Parler, so I guess you could buy Parler for what ten dollars. And also, this is not a fucking L for Kanye. This is a, a rare W for Kanye, where he uh, he accidentally fucking leaned into a dub, okay? He fell into a dub here. This decision was made in the interest of both parties in mid-November. Parler will continue to pursue future opportunities for growth and evolution of the platform for our vibrant community. Yeah, we have, you know, we have we have some Nazis, and then we have other kinds of Nazis. We have pedophile Nazis, you know what I mean? Like, all different spices. And Very they're Jewish vibrant. that don't. I think that's really what we're talking about. Do you disagree? I agree. And as you, as I talk about, I think about it, it's like, I got to say, I love the Zionist. I love the people that, that blocked my bank account because God runs the world and uses everyone. There's a power structure under God that starts with the thousand year old families, such as the Medici's. Then it goes to the Vatican, which is in bloodline to Peter, not Paul. Uh, then it goes to the financial groups, BlackRock, Vanguard, and then to the governments where we can go into Putin territory. And then it goes to Hollywood, the Rahm Emanuel. That is the first smoke screen to get past. And we're just breaking down those smoke screens. Hey, Ari, how you doing, Ari? Hey, I will. I, I want to jump in really quick and I will say. <laughs> yeah, Laura, you're on the air. Uh <laughs> How good. Yeah, the blacklisting of, uh, you know, people like Yay, people like Alex Jones, people like Nick Fuentes, people like myself. You know, everybody watching should understand we're living in a dangerous time now where people are being shut down and having their money frozen. OK, imagine not being able to access your bank account because somebody in a boardroom decides that they don't agree with what you're saying. And so. Uh, you know, for people who are critical, uh, you know, of Yay, Nick, Alex, myself, or whoever, right? Uh, just, just think of how fast the tables could turn. And I think this is what you've been talking about for years, Alex. You've been warning people about what's coming for years, and now people want to act like, oh, well, how did we get to this point? Censorship is the reason why we've got to this point. Okay, so you know, these things wouldn't be happening if people weren't being censored. Well, sure, Laura. Can I ask you this question? Because you know, you're a, you're a smart, uh, you know, successful, pro-America Jewish lady. Uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call cap on that. No. The, the, you know, it's an American uh, that lives so. in Florida. From my experience... None of those things that he said are true. It could not be further from the truth. I think what goes on politics, aren't Jews like everybody else, like left wing, right wing, and different factions fighting with each other and everybody else? Alex Jones back on a shit, trying very desperately to be like, come on, Laura, come on, say it. Like, you know, Jews are not a monolith. <laughs> like any other group. I mean, I understand there's powerful groups in Hollywood and all these mafias, but it's like we don't blame Italians for the Italian. Oh, shit, you're right. She is born in America, and she is Jewish. I was just focusing on the smart and successful part. Mafia, and when I criticize the Jewish mafia, which is one of the most powerful in the world, which I don't like, I don't dislike because they happen to be Jewish. I happen because they, they're there. Dude, this is really fucking interesting. Like, I can't get over the fact that they are, like, all, they are all, like, come on, don't do, like, max level anti-Semitism. Just do, like, one tier below. You know what I mean? Like, that's the plight here. That's the conversation here. It's like, dude, you're doing maximum tier anti-Semitism when you should be doing like a lighter version of that. Please. Like that that's Alex Jones' entire gripe with this process is that like that, you know, he needs to lower the anti-Semitism. But like you can still do it. Like you can just say Jewish mafia, all this shit, you know? But just like just like crank the anti-Semitism dial a little bit. Come on, please. They're a mafia. That's really how I think we destigmatize it. Just say no to the mafia that is the ADL in Hollywood. Or do you disagree with that or agree or you want to say something? No, I, I look, there's factions within any group, but right? I don't think it's I don't think that 
Even though there's a panel of crazy, the censorship takes have not been far off, in my opinion. What? No. They're fucking insane. Dude, these people are profoundly privileged, and that group of individuals includes myself as well. You are a sucker, okay? You can be canceled, censored for no fucking reason. Your manager would not like... If your manager doesn't like you, you're, you can be canceled, quote-unquote, lose your fucking job. These people are at the fucking literal peak, okay? They're on a mountaintop. And they're like trying to see what they can fucking get away with. If you work at a fucking Jiffy Lube, you can't do a tenth of the fucking things that these people are saying without facing immediate repercussions. Okay? That's a crazy take. Don't get it twisted, Assam. Many normies think Kanye has a point. He he said he would buy his stuff now. What? What she said about how quick the tide can turn was kind of scary, though. Yeah, I mean, it has to be a sock account, right? Or I don't know. If their logs are normal, then uh, they're probably getting twisted. There is no... There is no real cancellation for these people. And Kanye West fucking proves it. You know what I mean? Think about that. Kanye West has said all the no-no things, okay? Only the bank account shit's not good, but banning is good. First of all, Kanye West didn't lose his fucking bank account because of what he said. Come on. He lost his bank account because he tried to stop banking with fucking JP Morgan and Chase. What are you talking about? Why are you believing his dumbass lie? He literally said he did not want to bank with them anymore. And that's the reason why they shut it down. They shut his accounts up because he didn't want to work with them anymore and he doxed their fucking employees. What are you talking about? You think these banks give a fuck that Kanye West is anti-Semitic? Guys, they work with an international sex trafficking ring. They work with literal fucking drug lords and, and, and terrorist cells. Okay, hello? They don't give a shit about Kanye's no-no words or whatever. Don't be fucking silly. Who the fuck are you talking about then? Well, yeah, who got debanked then? Who are you talking about if it's not Kanye West? Who got debanked, supposedly? You're silly. A bunch of people have had their accounts and PayPal accounts shut down. First of all, having their PayPal accounts shut down is entirely separate than fucking Kanye West plight. Yes, there are people who have their PayPal account shut down. Sex workers. There are people who get their PayPal account shut down. People who are raising money for Palestinians. Okay? That has nothing to do with, like, uh, the, the, the fucking Kanye West got debanked bullshit. PayPal's been shutting... Also, PayPal shuts down accounts always, dude. What the fuck? It's not a bank. They do, like, I incredible amounts of, of fucked up shit. Huh. What do you mean he lost billions in the respect of most of the public? Does canceling mean they need to be on the streets? Dude, he lost billions in the respect of most of the public because he kept saying gross anti-Semitic shit on every fucking outlet that literally tried to desperately give him an out. If you can't comprehend that even Alex Jones here, who literally lost a billion dollars in a defamation suit, is literally trying to get Kanye West to desperately rein in the anti-Semitic shit by just substituting it for fucking dog whistles, even on this conversation as he refuses to say that and keeps saying he loves Hitler and he loves the Nazis, then yeah, I don't know what to tell you. You must have, you must agree with him or you are the biggest idiot I've ever seen in my entire life. And you don't think that there is any sort of context associated with this sort of shit. It's not because people fucking canceled him. It's because corporations were like, I don't want to fucking work with a guy who says he loves Hitler. Do you want to work with a guy who says he loves Hitler? Is that an appropriate thing for you? Does living in a free society mean that you have to force you have to forcibly work with a fucking dude who comes into work every day and shows you porn and says he loves Hitler and tells you that like Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior actually told him that he has to fucking go on this thing. That's crazy, man. Go ahead. Say it. Thousands of people every year get canceled from their jobs for trying to unionize and spread awareness of human rights abuses, but we're supposed to care about these multimillionaires getting canceled for saying the most bigoted shit imaginable. Yeah, what the fuck? One of the things being to fucking burn her at the stake. You can really generalize any group. I think that when you look at the demographics of Jews in America, over 73% of Jews vote Democrat. And so when you see a lot of, uh, you know, people making decisions who happen to be uh, Jewish, it's coming from a Grouchy left wing vegan perspective. And Jose, I'm a nationalist. The you know, well. I'm a nationalist and I'm Jewish. Jewish, and I've been a very strong supporter of President Trump. And that's a question. Why were they so scared of you? Because you've been as much banned as me or even more. I mean, they have come after you. Why do they? What? Why are they scared of Laura Loomer? Because I'm a free... Because she's an unhinged psychopath. She got banned from Uber for, like, openly being Islamophobic to the fucking drivers and shit, okay? Also, she's gross. Like, that doesn't help either. Over the years, Laura Loomer has become this, like, She's the more she's the most Florida thing and just like busted her fucking face to no to to just unimaginable levels. Like she already wasn't very attractive, but it was so crazy that like she she looks like that episode of Atlanta. 
You know what I mean? With the with Donald Glover wearing that fucking face mask that's supposed to be like Michael Jackson or whatever. What the fuck? Why were you mentioning the Balenciaga meeting notes? Why it's rude to suck at Warcraft? Okay, dude, chill out. I'm not going to watch your fucking dumb one-hour link. Yeah, Teddy Perkins, dude. She looks fucking crazy. Free speech absolutist. And uh, regardless of what somebody may, may say, even whatever they... Classic switching to berating the looks. Yeah, except, first of all, I mean, come on. And uh, secondly... I already addressed why she got fucking banned off of like Uber and shit, you dumb. Okay. She got banned not for being ugly, okay, which I'm sure didn't help. <laughs> but she got banned for she got banned for from Uber at least for being openly Islamophobic, okay? She also is a pick me for Nazis. She also wasn't necessarily the most attractive person, but literally <laughs> through a, a bunch of dedicated plastic surgery procedures made herself look like the jigsaw doll from the Saw series, okay? They say about Jews or whatever they may have to say about Israel or Judaism. I'm not going to advocate for anybody to be silenced, anybody to be banned, or anybody to have their accounts shut down or their money frozen simply because of their viewpoints. This is America, and we need to promote free speech absolutism. And we need our politicians to start promoting free speech absolutism. And this is what I ran when I ran for Congress twice in Florida, the first time in Trump's home district, which was actually the most Jewish district in the country. And then most recently in District 11, too. you know, I ran on a campaign of free speech. Absolutely. No, I know you do. So what about a, what about a First Amendment or for a Bill of Rights party? Well, you know, that could trans. There goes the son again, making fun of uh, women's looks, dude. That's crazy. There goes the son again. He's so misogynistic, bro. I say, as my Reddit account history clearly shows that I literally am a white supremacist, misogynistic PUA shithead on the internet. But for this brief duration, I will clip it. I will ship it. I will try to get him canceled. But of course, most people don't give a fuck. Uh, so shut the fuck up. And send party lines. What about a free speech pro to self-defense, a First Amendment, Second Amendment party? I mean, how do we fix this, Yay? Uh, we fix this with the word of christ the first book of moses called genesis in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the water damn it's almost like just off of a reddit profile you know who that person is yeah bro of course i do because every time some dumb motherfuckers on the right try to do like a targeted campaign to be like let's cancel a song because he's being misogynistic or whatever you can very easily see all the other things that they've said on reddit and it's always like the most unhinged right-wing nazi anti-woman shit so yes that's where we start and they know that that's why prometheus shows that all right laura thank you so much thank you uh y y closing comments or yay i want to move on to laura, holly and thank folks. you very much for calling and talk later thanks a lot all right all so right, good yeah. that's that's all good right. uh great nick florida. you want Nick, yeah, you know, see you in Florida. You want to say something before we go to Ali Alexander and Owen? Yeah, I want to jump in and say that um, I uh, I agree. I think though that it's not so much about the Bill of Rights. I think it's. I'm also going to make fun of. I'm also now going to make fun of Ali Alexander. Trigger warning: If you also have a a birth defect uh, specifically caused by inbreeding in the form of a Habsburg jaw, then uh, it's a trigger warning for you ahead of time because like it, it is literally. Like, I have no journalistic integrity if I do not mention it. You will know what I mean if you ever see what he looks like from the side, okay? Um, it's really but, more about Christianity. I think that what America needs is a Christian party. Oh, I agree. Politically, it's about our freedoms. But you're right. Christ is first. Right. And, and it gets to the nature of Judaism which is the fact that Jews do not believe that Christ was the Son of God. And in fact, they're the only group that hate Jesus. Muslims what? see Jesus as a prophet. Buddhists, Hindus see Jesus as a spiritual figure. Jews write in their... Bro, <laughs> that's not true. What the fuck? Yo, Nick Fuentes hates Jews so much, he's like defending Muslims, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, he's right. Muslims do actually see Esau as like a legitimate prophet, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Jewish people also uh, don't have an issue with uh, Jesus. After all, I mean, wasn't Jesus Jewish? Like, what the fuck? This is old school Christian anti-Jew talking points now? Yeah, that's weird, dude. They're Talmud that Christ is burning in hell. They they don't like the cross. Well, they, I think that's because he's kind of was taking over the thing. So at the end of the day, we worship a Jew or we say he's not really a Jew. 
It's not the same thing, though, because the kind of Judaism that we have now is not of the Old Testament. It's of the rabbinical oral tradition. So these people are worshiping. They're not, they're not following the Old Testament. They're following the Zohar and the Talmud and all that. That's right. Exactly. So, so I, well, I mean, we, people should read that for themselves. What about Holly Selassie? Because this is what happened to Kyrie Irving, and it made me really mad because when I was a kid growing up reading comic books and stuff, I, was, I, I could read really early. When I was like five, I could read like a 10-year-old. When I was 10, I could read like a college student. And so I, I put down comic books when I was about eight because my mom had all these history books. and with, uh, Some of them were picture history books, but I started reading those. And it's like a fact that Solomon married a bunch of black women. It's a fact that Ethiopia was Jewish. It's a fact that North Africa was Jewish. It's a fact that that went on. And then Kyrie Irving puts out a video explaining that a bunch of North African blacks are uh, intermarried and part Jewish. And Israel lets a bunch of blacks in because they can prove that their lineage, their names are Jewish. Okay, okay, listen. Look, I know he's trying to fucking do his best here, okay? He's trying to do his Kanye's best, okay? To, like, dial the anti-Semitism back, but you don't have to lie, okay? Yeah, I don't know if Israel is very fond of... of <laughs> First of all, the, the blacks mention is hilarious. He keeps saying, the blacks! And uh, secondly... Yes, there are black Jewish people. Uh, the Ethiopian uh, uh, conversation is true. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't say that Israel's super fond of allowing black Jewish people into Israel. So there is that. But uh, just saying, kind of there's kind of a kind of a big point of contention, and I would say in Israel uh, with uh, their uh, they are guys. Tucker Carlson literally looked to Israel's deportation protocols and openly stated that Israel had a bounty program. Okay. Israel decided to put together a bounty program for civilians to to either report or personally fucking handle uh, undocumented immigrants inside of their borders. Tucker Carlson, the only time he's ever praised Israel was when uh, when that was happening. OK, a racist towards the Sudanese or Ethiopian black Jews that immigrate into Israel. They kick them out. There's like these guys don't care when they're talking about like black Jews or, or Sudanese people or Ethiopian people like they don't care. They're fucking white supremacists, dog. They j literally don't care. They're just using it as an opportunity to show hypocrisy. OK, that's it. There's quotas. Well, I mean, Israel's even mean to the Hasidic Jews now. I mean, that's yeah. what I'm saying. They're waging war. Right. So, so, and I, I agree with you. And what they've done to Kyrie Irving is just to say. Hey, Dr. Zelenko, beautiful person, wonderful guy. Mm. He'll tell you, he goes, yeah, that's it, it, what runs Israel's evil and so is your groups. Ben Shapiro I mean, just mad that Kyrie won't sign his basketball. Back to you, Nick. <laughs> so, so, but what, what about that issue? I'm sure you know about Hylam Selassie and, 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 and Kyrie Irving. Your, your, your take on Kyrie. That's my brother. And I love the fact that just like now, you, it felt like you were in this battle by yourself, but now you got two warriors alongside of you, like gargoyles at the top of the buildings in New York, ready to fight for Christ. And when Kyrie put up that information, they always want to write me off and say, yay, it's just so crazy, so crazy, so crazy. And then Kyrie was like, okay, here goes some information right here. Information is the unlock. There's five elements that the 1%, the elites use to control the 99%, which are the masses. Those elements are water, food, shelter. Bro, he took the 99%, 1% rhetoric, okay? Most popularized, I would say, by jewish bernie sanders and he turned it on and said like no it's the one percent that is jews that's controlling 99 percent the non-jews how can one person be so close to the truth and then take such a fucking gigantic u-turn and flip it in the most like violent reactionary way possible he is so hyper fixated on like hating jewish people that he just like it's crazy it's, it's just insane like you literally took a cogent point made time and time again by Bernie Sanders, and you're just like turning it on Jewish people. Medicine, education, which one of those five elements are the most important? Education, because with the knowledge, you can go get water, you can go get food, you can get shelter, and you can get medication. They don't want independence. I agree. And Kyrie fought for something. And then also, you know, for me, Ky well, Kyrie, I love Kyrie. He he did what his job was. They had the Hebrew Israelites in front of the game. And now the high schools, I always think about the high schools. I always think about the future, the grammar schools, the high schools. These are the people that are going to change our lives. So the high schools are asking questions. People are running around saying, oh, yay's racist. What is the term racism was created 
And I think uh, the, 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 the construct of racism was created. The communist Russians. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like the whole woke culture, the idea of the white what? man. He said that the, the racism and woke culture was invented by the communist Russians. What? What the fuck did he just say? Wait, hold up. Did this. The Jewish guy did this. Now I'm saying specifically. Is he doing like, is he, is he doing like fucking, uh, like old school 60s era, like anti-communist red scare shit? Like, is that what he's saying? Because like, that's what people used to say. People used to say in America, like, because the USSR was actually uh, very active in uh, talking about, uh, very active in like talking about, uh, you know, uh, activating like black liberation groups, which were already like uh, pretty fucking communist. And they regularly would... Um, they regularly would talk about like racism in America. They would try to use it as a as a disruptive mechanism uh, within the capitalist infrastructure. Um, that uh, like a lot of right wingers would say, "Oh, these guys are like these guys are like uh, uh, communists." Like that's that's what they said about MLK as well. Which you know, ultimately he was uh, uh, Martin Luther King was a socialist, right? Like very open about it as well. So they weren't necessarily wrong when they said that, but they would they kept saying like all of the civil rights movement. Uh, to to like uh, liberate black people or or offer black people like any kind of civil liberties uh, equal uh, equal civil liberties was a socialist backed movement. So I think that's what he's basically saying. Uh, the bankers. I, I think know, my though. misstep in the tweet was to pinpoint a people as a point as opposed to pinpointing the devil and the effect that the devil used to have that. But more than that, it was my disobedience to God that forced me into the whale stomach as I am right now, but it's only my obedience to God that's good. Trotsky invented racism to render debate impossible is an old thing people would say. Wait, what? Really? Gonna bring me out of the whale stomach. Well, let's elaborate. You're not walking back what you said. You are clarifying it, which is key. It's evil in the hearts of men and women that's a problem. And, and so you're not walking it back. You're clarifying. This is big. Let's clarify Satan, the angel. God's one of his favorite angels, one of the most powerful angels. The most powerful. Yeah, Satan. That's what I like. The most powerful angel, Satan. And, and he brought angels with him when he left heaven, right? How many angels did Satan bring with him? 33% of them. So he brought billions of angels with him. So angels, I mean, uh, Satan has 33% of God's warriors with him. Dude, I can't like, I think you need to have uh, like at least a little bit of Christianity brain rot to be able to follow some of the stuff. Like for me, it doesn't even read as fan fiction. Like when they start saying stuff like this, my brain shuts off. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys can follow along with like what they're talking about, but I have no idea. <laughs> Someone said, what JRPG are they talking about? Yeah, literally. I'm like, give me this in like Dark Souls format. You know what I mean? Is this Bloodborne? Like I need to, like I need to see it. To, to get invested in it like i can't to be honest demonology is just fun shit to read but the man believes it for real i just don't know working for satan but god runs the world and it's satan that that gets inside of the zionists and makes them do evil things but uh, uh these are these are stories because i'm i'm a baby christian right but i heard that you know god loves me so much he loves me so much right then i go to drink champs and i'm drinking and the Bible says, king, don't drink, right? I know it's not Milo. I know I'm not saying it in correct, perfect English. But the Bible says, king, don't drink. And I'm drinking and I'm smoking. Is and he I'm, saying he's king? And I'm using my ego because I'm, I'm tired of these like fed. Uh, You're like, I'm lit. I'm right? lit. Let, let me say, I'm tired of these fed celebrities trying to pick on me, thinking that they gangster. We Yo. Alex, you better watch out. You're about to get canceled for AAVE, my friend. <laughs> I'm school. lit. I'm lit. You're lit, right? You're saying I'm lit. Isn't that what the kids say? <laughs> Mills. We're not in high school, Puff Daddy. We're not, and everyone thinks that they're so much more gangster, like they got me in some way. Ain't none of y'all more gangster than God, and God got me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying that. Oh, no. Everybody yeah. pose and act a tough. It's nothing. If, you're, yeah, yeah, if you yeah. talk about rebel black sheep, yeah. I mean, you're definitely it, buddy. Yeah, y'all yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not tough to me. But I'm drinking, and then I start saying stuff that doesn't please God, right? It wasn't the Zionists. It wasn't the banks. It's God set me back. But the fact that 
the fact that I still had 400 million and Forbes couldn't get around it, it showed God loves me, but he just had to, he had to set me back a little bit. Well, it's bit. a Jobian proverb. You're going through a yeah. Jobian trial. Yeah, because since I lost my wife, right, since I lost my family and I was no longer the priest right in the middle of that home and I didn't have the say so over the content that my kids watch and what they and what they wore and where they went to school and how we went to church and what they ate. I was frustrated and I let the devil come and get me. I let the devil pull me in. Next thing you know, I'm at I'm at New Year's Eve parties having threesomes. I'm like God was so mad at me he said i empowered you i gave you every skill set you're like moses you saved caesar's life in battle Tw bro he's just like me for real dude what the fuck that's crazy yeah. <laughs> twice you know it, you might stutter you might, might not be the best communicator but you're a leader yay and you're down there you're not representing me you're drinking you're having sex and you know what? And, and God, he, he waited on me. He let me go, you know, eight months into the year. But it wasn't until I bragged about serving Satan with the actions that God said, I got to set you back now and set you straight. And then, so we're moving my school. We're moving the Donda Theology Engineering University into a church. And we were there talking with the pastor and then a homeless gentleman came in and was talking to us. And I said, is this a plant? I don't know, but this was the greatest theologist that I met. And I had him come to a Bible study. Um, we, were, we were working on the, the, the walk to the house. I don't like to call it a campaign. We we're working to the walk. Yeah, hey, hold on. This is a hard break at the end of the hour. Stations rejoin us. I skipped the other break. We got to have this. We're back in two minutes. We got to okay. do this hard break. And I asked, do you want to put a website out where people can actually hear what you have to say? Or? I want you to remind me what I'm saying so I can give this explanation.